How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? You know why? Because you have a choice. Can you lower this just a little? Thank you. Everyone say, I have the choice. I have the power to choose. I choose life, not death. I choose freedom, not bondage. Because I have power to choose in Jesus' name. Would you turn to Isaiah 61? Glory, glory, and glory. Welcome to Tuesday Night Training. This is not about religion. In fact, I hate religion. So did Jesus. So I'm going to do exactly what my daddy did. I'm going to believe the way my daddy believed, and I want to speak the way my daddy speaks. Amen? Glory. Isaiah 61. Now, we're going here first before we go anywhere. How many of y'all know what you speak is what you eat? And what you eat is what you become. Amen. There's something that the Spirit really impressed on me. Before we get going here. Isaiah 61 and verse 1. Let's speak it. The Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to do what? Play basketball? Hello? He has anointed me to do what? Preach good tidings to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim freedom to the captives and the opening of the prison to those who are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn and console those who mourn in Zion. To give them what? Beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, and the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they may be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he may be glorified. I want you to grab hold of something tonight because it's very, very vitally important, especially in these last days, because we are in the last days. Without God's presence, you and I are nothing. Amen. Amen? We're nothing. I don't care if you memorize the word of God, you're still nothing. Jesus didn't do anything until the anointing came, and he was the word of God. Amen? Amen? Amen. When the anointing came, he went. Amen? And he was the word of God. So let's grab hold of this, because it's essential. There's something in this scripture that says something powerful. It says, the garment of of praise for the spirit of heaviness. That's called oppression. Amen. That's called hindrance. It is a garment that comes, but you, that garment does not come with your mouth shut. Amen. That garment comes with your mouth open. Does everybody get it? See, what happens is the enemy comes and replaces the garment of religiosity for the garment of praise. Why? Because the garment of praise, the enemy will notice. When you have the garment of praise on, he doesn't want to get near you. But when you have the garment of religion on, oh, he comes. Why? Because that doesn't protect you. See, when you and I come into the presence of God to minister to him, not to get anything, that's called second chamber living. Amen? Because there's the three, three chambers of the tabernacle. There's the outer court, the holy place, and the most holy place. And we're to be living in the second and third chamber. See, what happens is the enemy comes and he begins to whisper. He says, stop. It's time for you to receive. No, it's still time for you to minister to the Lord. Does everybody get it? The moment you stop your mouth, is the moment he begins to exchange the garment of praise for the garment of religion. Is everybody okay? I'm telling you, the Lord is sharing this with us this evening. 
Because it is essential. People give up so quickly. They're sitting there waiting for God to give them something. And he's saying, I'm not giving you nothing until you give to me more of you. You better get dressed with that garment of praise. Why? Because that's called priesthood. And you cannot be a warrior without having the garments of a priest. It's called under armor. So you can't even put on the whole armor of God without the garments of priesthood. That's called the garment of praise. Does everybody understand that? So when you put on the garment of praise, then you can put on the garment, uh, uh, the armor of God. But so many people don't get this. You are not here, and don't get me wrong, you're not here first to receive, you're first here to minister. You must fulfill your ministry of ministering to the Lord. Because if you can't minister to him, you got no right ministering to nobody else. Amen. The devil will eat you up. Has everybody got it? If you're not carrying the garment of praise, you're in trouble. You're, nothing, you're walking around with a bullseye and the devil says, I know that person. He does not carry the presence of God. Too many people quit. They get involved in themselves. Oh, oh, what about me? Forget it. It's all about him. Amen. Amen. Without the garment of praise, you got no power. Why? Because the anointing comes. See, when the devil sees that you got the garment of praise on, he knows you've been anointed. And the Bible says that the anointing, has everybody got it? The gates of hell cannot prevail. When the devil sees the anointing is on you, forget it. He can't touch you. Do, 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 do. Amen? Can't touch this. You know, I, I've shared this before um, multiple times, but I want to share it again. We came home one night from an anointing service, and I'm telling you, it was just wonderful. And I had this dream. And I was... Uh, I was in the driveway, and I was walking in the driveway, and all of a sudden, there was a, a, like a hole in the driveway, which I didn't notice, but because of, there was a reflection, so I couldn't see it. And when I stepped into this hole, man, it just, whew, I started falling down. And I lifted my hands to heaven, and I started floating up. And I started floating up. And I was beginning to enjoy this. And I started floating up. And I floated up, and I floated back over on the solid ground of the driveway. And I saw the enemy trying to grab me, so I floated back over. <laughs> I said, I'm going to tease him. And he kept trying to grab me and kept trying to grab me. And he couldn't, and I started to torment him like he torments others. I was ba basically mocking him. <laughs> Can't touch this. And I floated back over, and I was giving glory to the Lord. I said, Lord, this is wonderful. And I woke up. I wanted to go right back to sleep. I wanted more. See, there's a difference walking in God's presence. But you must first dissolve yours. Your presence must be dissolved. That's why we worship. Do you know when you're clapping your hands, you're shooing demons away. You are changing the atmosphere around you. You are moving darkness away so the presence of God can come. He says, open your mouth and I will fill it. That's why people are walking around miserable. That's why they can't last long. Because they don't endure. Again, it is the garment of praise that overcomes Oppression, heaviness, weariness, fear. Does everybody get it? Good. Now, go to Galatians 5. Galatians 5, chapter 1. Oh, Galatians 5, verse 1, sorry. Hallelujah. Let's speak it together, okay? Because why? We're going to sow, aren't we? Because what you speak is what you eat. You're still opening your mouth. 
Again, when you're reading the Word of God, speak it. Speak it. Did Jesus think the devil away? No, he spoke him away. See, that's stinky religion. That's plumb dumb. Because people don't even understand the Word of God. Why? Because they don't even invite the Holy Spirit to help them understand it. They know, let see, I've got to study this. I've got to get this. You're not going to. It's multidimensional. You're not going to get this without the Holy Ghost. You will never understand this fully without the Holy Spirit. You can memorize it. and You can even know the page numbers. You'll still get your butt kicked. Because if you ain't backed by heaven, you're only backed by yourself. This is why it's called Holy Ghost Boot Camp Officers Training School. <laughs> Glory. Verse 1, let's speak it. Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty or freedom by which Christ has made us free. And do not be entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Indeed, I, Paul, say to you that if you become circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. And I testify again to every man who becomes circumcised that he is a debtor to keep the whole law. You have become estranged from Christ, you who attempt to be justified by law or yourself, your own strength. You have fallen from grace. Grace is what? God's plan. It's not, uh, <laughs> this kills me. It's not unmerited favor. That's the doctrine of not Jesus. It's unmerited love. Grace is God's plan to what? Escape from the deception of the devil and from the wrath of God. You and I are saved by God's plan. That's called grace. So if you're not cooperating with God's plan, are you under grace? No. You're lost. Verse 5. For we through the Spirit eagerly wait for the hope of righteousness by faith. For in Christ Jesus neither circumcision or uncircumcision avails anything but faith working through love. You ready? You ran well. Who what? Hindered you from obeying the truth. How many of y'all want to learn about overcoming hindrances? Amen. That's what tonight's about. Overcoming hindrances. Has everybody got it? You ran well. Who hindered you from obeying the truth? This persuasion does not come from God who calls you. It says a little leaven leavens the what? Whole lump. And the word leaven means evil. It's a message of evil. It's a message of deception. I have confidence in you in the Lord that you will know, have no other mind, but he who troubles you shall bear his judgment, whoever he is. And I, brethren, if I still preach circumcision, why do I still suffer persecution? then the offense of the cross has ceased. I could wish that those who trouble you would even cut themselves off. For you, brethren, have been called to liberty or freedom. Only do not use this freedom or liberty as an opportunity to fulfill your flesh. But through love serve one another. For all the law is fulfilled in one word, even in this, you shall love your neighbors as yourself. But if you bite and devour one another, beware lest you become consumed by one another. I say then do what? Walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. How powerful. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish or desire. But if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law of sin and death. In other words, you and I must come to a place where we stop justifying by our works. Amen. Amen. You do not justify your walk by your works. That's got to stop. That's self-righteousness. Somebody get it. That's, well, I do this. I do that. Forget it. Ain't got nothing to do what you do. The bottom line is your walk with the Lord heart to heart. Amen. Why? Because we labor on to the Lord. It's got nothing to do with earning anything. You earn God's trust by being obedient to him, not by how much work you do. Does everybody get it? Is everybody okay? Stop justifying by your work self-righteousness. Who or what hinders 
you from obeying the truth, he's saying, from following, from believing, from learning, or practicing the truth. He says, who's, who's hindering you? Why are you, you being hindered in this area? He said, because why? We're, <laughs> what's hindering you we, from walking in the Spirit? Listen, without walking in the Spirit, you, can't over, you can never overcome hindrances. Amen. You can't. We are called to liberty or freedom, but this only comes where the Spirit of the Lord is. So, we must allow the Holy Spirit to have access to every part of our mortal being, or else there can't be freedom. So, one of the things that the Holy Spirit first starts to do is expose. He's trying to dissolve your flesh. Remember we talked, now your flesh is your old man, isn't it? It's the one that was born in the image and likeness of the enemy. That's why you need to be born again. Amen? So in this, we've got to come to a place where we're no longer justifying ourselves in our walk with God by works. He's the one that just, you know what justifies you? Your walk with him. Not your works. Because he said, many will come before me and say, Lord, I did this, I did that, I did this, I did that. I cast out devils, I did this. I fed the poor. I did all of this stuff. He says, too bad. Depart from me, I don't know you. Why? Because you practice lawlessness, self-righteousness. You didn't even listen to me and ask me what, you want, what I wanted you to do. You did your own counsel. You walked out of the dictates of your own heart, and you did your own will and not mine. I sent you into this world to fulfill a mission for me, not for you. Amen. Does everybody get it? First Peter chapter 1. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You better lock the door tonight. Hallelujah. <laughs> ah, I love God's presence. I mean, I love God's presence. I'm not only, I only, not only love it, I'm in love with his presence. And you know what? I'm miserable when I'm not in that presence. I hate it. You can ask my wife. I don't say nothing. I hibernate. Because there's times when the Lord will lift his presence. Nothing else because he's checking you. He wants to know if you'll still follow him. He wants to know how much you love his presence. Sometimes he'll lift his presence and it's like, you know what, Dad? I don't like when you do that. <laughs> I'm going to praise you even still because I'm not going to allow feelings to dictate decisions because emotions will always mislead you. Amen. See, so many people are trying to, they live by emotion, they don't feel God's presence. Ah! <laughs> no trust at all. Amen. No trust. The words must come out of your mouth. Why? You must change the atmosphere around you. And it doesn't mean the Lord left you. He's just checking you. He wants to know where you're at. Are you one who lives by how he feels or are you going to live by truth? Because he can't trust someone who lives by how they feel. He can trust those who live by truth. And he's got to tell them, Lord, where will you be? You say, I'll be here. But you've got to come after me today. He loves to play hide and seek. I hate that game. <laughs> but praise be to God. When he says play, you got to play. Because <laughs> he's God and we're not. <laughs> First Peter chapter 1 and verse 3. Blessed be, let's speak it together. Blessed be the God and the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who what? 
who according to his abundant mercy has begotten us again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead to a what? Inheritance incorruptible and undefiled <clears throat> and that does not fade away reserved in heaven for who? You. You. You have an inheritance. Why? Because you're a joint heir. Do you know that be, being a joint heir allows you access to everything of God? Can you comprehend that? I don't feel it. Oh, too bad. Just hit yourself with the word. Make sure the Bible's shut, the door pages are cool, and you have a heavy one. Is everybody okay? Because we are joined to heirs, we have an access to all the things Daddy has for me and you. It says we're blessed with every spiritual blessing seated in heavenly places. What the heck? We have 2,000 angels minimum around us. One angel can kill 180,000 people. What's the problem? Amen. You know what the problem is? People living by how they feel. But you don't know how I feel. I don't want to know. And I don't give a hoot. Amen. Your feelings are not going to rescue you. They're not going to change a stinking thing. And don't get into the butt butt ministry. It says we're the head, not the tail. Amen. But, but, but. That's one of those mopeds. That's what they do. But, 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 but. Amen. Those rice burners go, me, 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 me. And the Harley goes, come out, come out, come out. Praise God. Anyways. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Now, now, how is this kept? Verse 5, it says, who are kept by the what? Power. What's the power of God? The anointing. The eternal presence and power and truth of Jesus Christ, God Almighty, all wrapped up in Jesus, who left his spirit for me and you. That's why he says, get filled with the Holy Ghost. Be saturated in his presence. Get on the garment of praise. You know, think about this. King David was anointed. What was he? Uh, he was a worshiper, wasn't he? Amen. He praised and worshiped. Then he danced in his underwear. No, we don't need to go that far. Amen. We'll just dance in our, our garments of praise. But look at what he did. He maintained, he set up a whole orchestra, a, a choir that was 24-7. To maintain protection. To maintain God's presence. 24-7. And this was not small. It was enormous. And they sacrificed every day. So they maintained God's presence. With the praise and worship that was going up. Everybody sang. They didn't sit there. Oh, holy. They were joyful. Why? They were ministering to the Lord. You minister to him, he ministers to you. Glory. All right. Are you ready? Verse 6. In this we what? No, wait a minute. Who are, who are kept by the power of God through faith for what? Salvation ready to be revealed in the what? Last time. In this you greatly rejoice, though now for a little while, if need be, you have been grieved by... Various trials called hindrances. That the genuineness, everyone say genuineness, of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perishes, though it is tested by fire, may be found to the praise and honor and glory at the revelation of Jesus Christ. So he's looking for those who are genuine. Genuine. Listen, genuine means you're not counting the days. Because if you do time, then you ain't genuine. Does everybody get it? That's not genuine at all. There are people that are sent and there are people that are removed. The ones that are genuine are sent. Amen? The ones that are not, God removes, even though they may think they're sent. Verse 8. Whom having not seen you love, 
Though now you do not see him, yet believing you rejoice with joy inexpressibly and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, the salvation of your soul. Various trials. He's looking for the genuineness of each and every part. Of, are we genuine? Are we real? Are we trustworthy? Amen? Are we faithful? Do we waver? Are we individuals that live by how we feel or we do we live by truth? And do we carry the garment of praise or the garment of religion? Do we carry the garment of emotion or the garment of truth? Which one do we carry? James chapter 1. Verse 12, let's speak it together. Blessed is the man who what? Endures temptation. For when he has been approved, aha, another test, he will receive the crown of life which the Lord has promised to those who love him. Only those who what? Endure. You're either going to overcome temptation, which are hindrances, or you're going to be taken out. Now, this is powerful because Watch what he says here. Let no one say that when he is tempted, I, he's tempted by God. For God does not tempt anyone by evil, nor does he himself tempt anyone. But each one is tempted when he is drawn away by his own what? Desires. How many of y'all know a desire is an emotion? Yeah. And then enticed. Then when desire has conceived... It gives birth to sin. In other words, it opens the door to the presence of evil. And sin, when it is full grown, brings forth what? Death. Do not be deceived, my beloved. Every good gift and every precious gift is from above and comes down from the Father of lights, with whom there is no variation in what? Shadow of turning. In other words, people are drawn away by desires. There's hindrances. There's a combination of two things of hindrances. Um, it's when people, the first thing is desires. Amen? It becomes a hindrance. Desires. They promote hindrances. The other thing is, is when people don't understand. Many, many times because people do not understand something, it actually becomes a hindrance to them. And what? becomes a hindrance to them just because they don't understand. So there's a combination of two things, desires and when they don't understand. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> cool. So what occurs then is when a person doesn't understand and has certain desires, which is emotional, they fall into that arena of hindrance which releases fear. Fear. The other thing is, is confusion. Unbelief. Fear, confusion, and unbelief. Fear, confusion, and unbelief. And what happens is, it promotes personal walls of false protection. I'm going to say it again. It promotes, it inputs personal walls people build walls and it's actually a false protection so they're actually using fear to protect themselves Amen. they're actually using confusion to protect themselves they're actually using unbelief to protect themselves because they're choosing to does everybody understand the result is emotional decision making instead of truth making that's the end result they're still making emotional decisions instead of tr truth decisions. They fall into a place of survival instead of surrender. They fall into a place of mistrust instead of trust. Most of the time, these feelings are the place of discouragement. Everybody got it? These feelings are the place of discouragement. 
If there is discouragement, you can root these all the way back. You can root them all the way back to desires and things people don't understand. Why? Because the protectors, it brings a person into fear, confusion, and unbelief, personal walls. And these decision-making are emotional decisions instead of truth decisions. Does everybody get this? Proverbs 3. So the first thing to overcome anything, has everybody got this, is to have understand. You got to have understand. You got to be able to under. You got to at least recognize that there's hindrance. Proverbs three. If a person cannot recognize, first of all, the person can't recognize because he's filled with the Spirit. You won't recognize anything. You can pray in tongues and still not be filled with the Spirit. That's a gift. Does everybody understand that? That's a gift of the Spirit, but it doesn't mean you're filled with the Spirit. That's the evidence, the first evidence of being baptized in the Holy Spirit is tongues. But once you get the gift, the gift stays. You can use it. But you may not be filled toward the fullness of the Spirit. Amen? Amen. Or you're easily deceived, easily misled, still making emotional decisions. People that are filled with the Spirit of God do not make emotional decisions. They just don't. Because they're too in love with Jesus. In verse 1, is everybody there? Proverbs 3, verse 1. Let's speak it together. My son, do not forget my law, but let your heart keep my commands. For length of days and long life and peace they will add to you. Let not mercy and truth forsake you. Bind them around your neck. Write them on the tablet of your heart. And so find favor and high esteem in the sight of God and man. Are you ready? Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Not part of it. All of your heart. That means all the time. And lean not on your own understanding. Why? Because he knows when you lean on your own understanding, you're going to fall into a trap. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall what? Direct, Direct your paths. Do not be wise in your own eyes. Fear, reverence, honor, respect the Lord, and depart from what? Evil. It will be what? Health to your flesh and strength to your bones. Here it is. Are you ready? Honor the Lord with your possessions. Don't hoard them. They're not yours anyways. I worked hard for this. Puke. They're not yours anyways. Then you're not laboring on the Lord. You're laboring on yourself. Does everybody get it? You and I don't own anything. He owns it all. Just because you only got to give 10% doesn't mean you own the other 90. Amen? Everything we have is rental. Even your undergarments are rental. Hallelujah. I didn't say they were used, all right? Are you ready? We're going a little further. Honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all of your what? Increase. So your barns will be what? Filled with plenty and your vats will overflow with what? New wine. I love it. Are you ready? My son, do not despise the chastening of the Lord, nor detest his correction. For whom the Lord loves, he what? He corrects just as a father, the son in whom he delights. All right. He says, Lean not on your own understanding. Are you ready? That means you're going to need to get understanding, right? It says, trust in the Lord with all of your heart, not part of it. Acknowledge him and his word and not yourself first. Acknowledge him and his word and not you first. Honor him with all of your possessions and increase. 
Allow the counsel, correction, and direction to be a part of your everyday life. You ask for it. Lord, grant me today counsel, correction, and direction. Amen? It's real simple. If you're not asking for it, you ain't getting it. Now, if you're not filled with the Spirit, though you ask for it, you're missing it. You will miss everything. Does everybody get this? Why? Because God is spirit. And he even says, if you worship me, you must worship me in what? Truth and spirit. Spirit there means breath. And John 14. John 14, 15. <clears throat> Is everybody there? Let's speak it together, please. He says what? If you love me. <clears throat> you know how many people say, I love you, Lord? I love the Lord. I really love the Lord. But I ain't following him. I'm not obeying him. I'm going to still do my own thing. Well, then you don't love him. Because he says, if you love me, you'll follow me. If you love me, you'll, you'll obey me. It's real simple. Now, love is not a feeling. It's a choice. You choose to love. The, God, the Lord says, I chose you. You did not choose me. Now, we choose to love him. As you choose to love him, you begin to get a discipline. Discipline leads to relationship, and relationship leads to love affair. If you're consistent... Why? Consistency causes you to take off the old because the old does not love God. Your old man does not love God. He loves self and wickedness. He loves lust and everything else. But the new man loves God. So you, the new man must become stronger than the old man. And the only way that that can happen is to be filled with the Spirit of God. That's why Jesus said, eat my flesh, which is his word, and drink my blood, which is his spirit. Everybody got it? All right. Now, if you love me, keep my what? Amen. Commandments. And I will pray to the Father, and he will give you a helper or what we call a comforter. He's called the spirit of comfort. That he may abide with you for what? Forever, he is also known as the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him for he dwells with you and will be in you. I will not leave you, or you, I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. Now, this is so powerful because he says this helper, it's known as a comforter. See, one of the only ways that you're going to come out and overcome hindrances as they come out of your comfort zone into the comforter of the Holy Spirit. Because if you're not willing to come out of your little comfort zone that's been the deception and delusion of your whole life, you cannot overcome. You must come out of your comfort zone. That means you must come out of the old into the new and come into the comfort of the Holy Spirit. John 16. People get comfort in fear. People get comfort in confusion. People get comfort in their own belief system, even though they don't believe. They find comfort in it. They find comfort in their works. There's only one true comfort, and he's called the helper. Holy Spirit. You can't find no other comfort. Everything else is false and temporary. There's only one eternal comfort. See, everything we want to start to do now is step into the eternal and break off all the entanglements and affairs of this world. We want to be so cut loose of this world that nothing else matters. When nothing else matters, nothing can touch you. That's why we must sever emotional attachments. We must sever mindsets and strong. We must sever the arenas of religiosity. This is not about religion. This is about truth. God is not religious. He is reality. Religion has fantasy. 
The creator is reality. That's why the Holy Spirit has come is to bring reality, not fantasy. John 16, verse 5. Let's speak it, please. But now I go away to him who sent me, and none of you ask me, where are you going? But because I have, these, have said these things to you, sorrow has filled your heart. Nevertheless, I tell you the truth, it is to your what? Advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper or the what? Comforter will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. And when he has come, he will convict the world of sin. Why? Because before him there was no conviction. And of righteousness and of judgment, of sin because they do not believe in me, and of righteousness because I go to my Father and you see me no more, of judgment because the ruler who is Satan of this world is judged. I still have many things to say to you, but you're not going to be able to get them or understand them because you don't have the Holy Spirit yet. Oh, hallelujah. However, when the spirit of truth, the comforter, the Holy Spirit has come, he's going to what? Guide you into all truth. For he will not speak on his own authority, but whatever he hears, he will speak. And he will tell you things to what? Things to come. He will glorify me, for he will take of what is mine and declare it to you. All things that the Father has are mine. Therefore, I said that he will take of mine and what? Declare it to you. The helper, the comforter of truth. Listen, in this, that's where when you come out of your comfort zone, you come into the comfort zone of the Holy Spirit. You come out of your natural comfort zone, your temporary comfort. You come into another realm of the true comfort and truth of the Holy Spirit. Does everybody get this? That's where you and I, why? Because that's eternal. We want to touch everything and live in everything eternal. That's called living in the Spirit. Anything that's temporary ain't living in the Spirit. Proverbs 4. It's time to come out of your comfort zone. Oh, your comfort zone is also known as danger zone. The only place that ain't danger is the comforter. Proverbs 4, verse 1. Is everybody okay? Are you learning something? Well, you're being taught by the anointing, not by this person. In verse 1, let's speak it together. Hear my children instruct the instruction of a father and give attention to no what? Understanding. For I give you good doctrine. Do not forsake my law. When I was my father's son, tender and holy in the sight of my mother, he also taught me and said to me, let your heart retain my words. Keep my commands and live. Get wisdom Get understanding and do not forget nor turn away from the words of my mouth. Do not forsake her. She will preserve you. Love her and she will keep you. Wisdom is the principal thing. Therefore, get wisdom. And in all you're getting, get what? Get understanding. Let me share with you. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. I'm going to say it again. Wisdom tells you what to do. Understanding tells you how to do it. And this is not wisdom of the world, not understanding the world. This comes from the Father. Does everybody understand? In all you're getting, get understanding. Verse 8, it says, Exalt her and she will promote you. She will bring you honor when you what? Embrace her. She will place on your head an ornament of grace and a crown of glory she will deliver to you. 
Hear my son and receive my sayings, and the years of your life will be many. I have taught you in the way of wisdom. I have led you in the right paths. When you walk, your steps will, be, will not be what? Hindered. Why? Because you have wisdom and understanding. And you're walking in the Spirit who is the comforter and the helper, who's guiding you to all truth. When you run, you will not stumble. So you're going to walk and you're going to run and you won't be hindered. Take firm hold of instruction and do not let go. Keep her for she is your what? She is your what? Your life. Wow. Lean not on your own understanding. Trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Amen. Get wisdom. Get understanding. Wisdom tells you what to do. And understanding tells you how to do it. Matthew 11. Overcoming hindrances. In verse 25. Matthew 11 and verse 25. <clears throat> Let's speak it together, please. At that time, Jesus answered and said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, that you have hidden these things from the wise and prudent and have revealed them to babes. Even so, Father, for so it would seem good in your sight. All things have been delivered to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, nor does anyone know the Father except the Son, and the one whom the Son wills to reveal him. <clears throat> Come to me, all you who labor and ha are heavy laden, and I will what? Give you rest. He says, come to me. Why is he saying come to me? Because he's the teacher. He is the comforter. He will guide you to all truth. Take my yoke upon you and what? Learn from me. So freedom is learned, isn't it? Amen. The anointing is caught. Freedom is learned. Learn from me, for I am gentle and lonely in heart, and you will find rest for your souls, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Oh, I love it. But that's what we've got to what? Learn. We learn. We get understanding. When all of these begin to fall into place, you fall into a place of peace, joy. There's no fear in that realm. There's no doubt in that realm. None. There's complete trust. There's complete expectation. Knowing daddy has something for you. But we're not looking in the arena of, of receiving. We first look in the arena of ministering. And as we walk the rest of the day and we're in fellowship, we know God's trying to get something to us. But see, it says then you won't miss it. But if you're not filled with the spirit, you miss it. Amen? And the enemy brings a counterfeit. 1 Corinthians 10. Many people are deceived by counterfeits. Counterfeit doctrine. Blessings that bring a stumble and a curse. Things that are done out of God's time is not God. Amen? God is God and everything is done in his time. Or it's not his will. And when you don't know what to do, you don't do nothing. You maintain. You sow, sow, sow. Do you sow what? 1 Corinthians 10, verse 1. Moreover, brethren, I do not want you to be what? Unaware that all our fathers were under the cloud and passed through the sea. All were baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. All ate the same spiritual food. All drank the same spiritual drink. For they drank of that spiritual rock that followed them, and that rock was Christ. But when most of them, God was what? Not well pleased. For their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. Now these things became our examples to the intent that we should not lust after evil things as they also lusted. Even though they drank the spiritual food and the sp drank from the spiritual rock, they still drank it. Amen? 
but they still chose lust. And do not become what? Idolaters. Idolaters, as were some of them. As it is written, the people sat down to eat and drink and rose up to play. Nor let us commit sexual immorality, as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 fell. Nor let us tempt Christ, as some of them also tempted, and were destroyed by what? Serpents. Nor complain, as some of them also complain, and were destroyed by the destroyer. Now all these things happened to them as examples, and they were written for our admonishment. Upon whom the what? Ends of the ages has come. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed lest he what? Let think, think, he who thinks he's okay or in his own comfort zone instead of the comfort zone of the Holy Spirit, be careful. I'm okay. Let me tell you, we never say we're okay. None of us is okay. When you say you're okay, that's pride. When you say you're okay, you're leaning on your own understanding. You're either blessed or cursed. How are you doing today? I'm blessed. I never go, I, don't ask people how they feel. How are you feeling? Forget it. You blessed? Yeah. How are you doing today? I'm blessed and highly favored. Feel like crap. But I'm blessed and highly favored. But don't tell anybody that. Hello? I'm blessed. Does everybody get it? Confession brings what? Possession. What you speak is what you eat. What you eat is what you become. Oh, glory. Are you ready? Therefore, let him who thinks he's okay take heed lest he fall. Verse 13. No temptation has overtaken you except such as it is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But with the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear it. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak as to wise men. Judge for yourselves what I say. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians 3. How you doing? I'm all right. I'm okay. Really, I'm okay. No, you're not. If you were okay, you would say you were blessed. Hallelujah. I get people come up to me and say, you okay? I said, if I was okay, I wouldn't be here. Amen. You okay, man? Man, if I was okay, I wouldn't be here. Verse 9. Speak it together. For we are God's fellow workers. You are God's field. You are God's building. Verse 10. According to the grace of God, which was given to me as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he what? Builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on, these found, on this foundation with what? Gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become what? Clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which he has built on it endures, he will receive a reward. If anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet so as through fire. Do you not know that you are the temple of God and that the, temp the Spirit of God dwells in you? If anyone defiles the temple of God, God will destroy him, for the temple of God is holy, which temple you are. Let no one deceive himself. If any among you seems to be wise in this age, let him become a fool, that he may become wise. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he catches the wise in her own craftiness. And again, the Lord knows the thoughts of the wise, that they are futile. 
Therefore, let no one boast in men, for all things are, all things are what? Yours. You know, our foundation is built with the anointing. And there's an area where the word of God is what is used to be built on the anointing. Amen? So you and I must be fixed on the word of God. We are fixed. We are attached to. We are chained. Does everybody get it? We are chained to the foundation of the anointing and the word of God. Why? Well, when you're, when you're chained to both of those, it brings understanding, brings the Holy Spirit of comfort. Amen? Allowing to overcome all what? Hindrances. So we must be chained to the anointing. We must be chained to the word of God. We are fixed on it. That's where Paul said, I am a slave to Christ. What was he talking about? I'm a slave to the anointing. What does the word say? We are stewards of the mysteries of God. Amen? Amen. We are servants to Christ. What are we servants to? The anointing. The anointing doesn't serve me and you. We serve the anointing. And the mysteries come. And we are ambassadors of Christ. Glory. Ephesians chapter 5. Verse 8. I like verse 6, actually. Ephesians 5, 6. Let's speak it. Let no one deceive you with empty words, for because of these things the wrath of God comes upon the sons of disobedience. Therefore do not be partakers with them. For you were once darkness, but you are now light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness, righteousness, and truth. Finding out what is acceptable to the Lord and have no fellowship with unfruitful works of darkness, but rather what? Expose them. For it is shameful even to speak of those things which are done by them in secret. But all things that are exposed are made manifest by the light, for whatever makes manifest is light. Therefore, he says, awake you who are sleeping. Arise from the dead and Christ will give you light. See, then you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise, redeeming the time because the days are what? Evil. Therefore, do not be unwise, but what? Understand what the will of the Lord is. Are you ready? This is the kicker. Verse 18. And do not be drunk with what? Wine, booze, alcohol. Why? Because those are cursed items. Nothing but liquid dope. That's why people get stupid. Amen? And do not be drunk with wine, in which is in dissipation, but be filled with the Spirit of God, speaking to one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things to God the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and submitting to one another in the fear or reverence of God. Understand what the will of the Lord. What is the will of the Lord? The first part of the will of the Lord is your sanctification. Your sanctification, what is he looking for? You to be separated to him. That's the first part of the will of God. Sanctification, separated to him. And the second part of the will of God is to be filled with the spirit of God because you can't do nothing else without being filled with God's spirit. Amen? And then what happens? He releases wisdom. He releases understanding. He releases comfort. He releases power to overcome all hindrances. Is everybody all right? Psalm 34. Psalm 34. It's good to hear the pages turning on a Tuesday night. Let's speak it together, please. Come, you children, listen to me, and I will teach you the what? The fear of the Lord. The fear here is reverence, honor, and respect. Who is a man who desires life and loves many days that he may see good? Keep your tongue Tied like a bow. Turn it into a bow tie. Keep your tongue from what? Evil. And your lips from speaking deceit. Depart from evil and do good. Seek peace and pursue it. 
For the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous, and his ears are open to their cry. The face of the Lord is against those who do evil, to cut off the remembrance of them from the earth. The righteous cry out, and the Lord what? Hears. And what? Delivers them out of all of their troubles. The Lord is near to those who have a broken heart and save such as have a contrite spirit. Verse 19, are you ready? Many are the afflictions, hindrances of the righteous, but the Lord does what? Delivers them out of one. All. 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 If that person is spiritually positioned, you are delivered. The Lord will go before you as a consuming fire and snare your enemies. He'll protect you as a rear guard. You'll be cloaked in the glory of God where you are actually invisible. You will wear the garment of praise which brings his glory and his presence, fulfilling your priesthood, living in the second and third chamber where there's priesthood and warrior. You will be armed and dangerous. The enemy will fear you. You won't have to fear him. Amen. Oh, glory. <laughs> Many are afflictions that are righteous, but the Lord delivers them out of all. He guards all his bones. Not one of them is broken. Evil shall slay the wicked. And do you hear or see that? Evil shall slay the wicked. And those God will bring confusion in your enemy's camp for you. They'll end up killing themselves. Evil slays the wicked, and those who hate the righteous shall be condemned. The Lord redeems the soul of his servants, and none of those who what? Trust in him shall be condemned. Has everybody got it? Overcoming hindrances. Overcome. Get filled. Get understanding. Get wisdom. Stay positioned. Begin to recognize things. Be sensitive. The word says something powerful. It says the devil seeks whom he can devour, but he can't touch you if you are alert and consistent. That's why practice makes what? Perfect. Perfect. I want to go to Psalm 1 and we'll close there. Psalm 1. Don't do things out of God's time. Amen? Amen? Make sure you're sent and not removed. Psalm 1. Let's speak it together. Blessed. Everyone say blessed. blessed. What's the opposite of blessed? Cursed. Cursed. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly. It's amazing how many people call people that don't know nothing. Amen. They look for, to the world for counsel. It's amazing. They look to the world for counsel. And they're going to get ungodly counsel. And the Lord says, blessed are those who reject ungodly counsel. But curse are those who accept it. The world cannot give you counsel according to God. Amen? Amen? That's why he's called the spirit of counsel. It's called the Holy Spirit. He will tell you things to come. He's the greatest counselor. He will lead you. He will tell you. He will release counsel to you. Blessed is a man who walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the path of sinners, nor sits in the seat of the scornful. Man, get away from people that grumble and complain, man. And speak about things where God rescued him. Amen. It's amazing how many people speak against the ministry when God rescued their blessed assurance. Amen. It's because they ain't filled no more. Amen. They're getting their own counsel, the dictates of their own heart, misleading them. They can't see, can't hear no more. Their only concern is how they feel. But everybody reaps what they sow. Verse 2. But his delight is in the what? In the law or what we call the truth of the Lord. 
and in his truth or in his law, he meditates day and night. He shall be what? Like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth its fruit in its season, whose leaf also will not wither, and whatever he does will what? Prosper. The ungodly are not so, because they got no understanding. But our light, and they don't have the fear of the Lord. The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand in judgment. That's a day of reward. Nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall what? Perish. Overcoming hindrances. Everybody has hindrances. The enemy's always trying to set a trap for you. Amen? But we break through, we overcome. Everyone can overcome. But again, most of the hindrances come to people because they don't have understanding. They walk in fear. They walk in doubt. They walk in unbelief. And they're still court, touching the things of the world, trying to fulfill and get comfort from the world or get fulfillment from the world. Your fulfillment is from the presence of God. Maintain it. Fight for it. People working 60, 70 hours a week thinking they're building something. The only thing they're building is their own trap. Amen. Amen. Spend more time with God. You get more. Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Have mercy upon us and let your grace abound. Continue to fill us with your spirit. And grant us those eyes to see all the way through, the ears to hear, a heart to obey and follow. Lord, loose us from misunderstanding. Loose us from false comfort zones. Loose us from the arena of time. Loose us from ourself that we may walk in your time and your will, getting understanding and wisdom and the true comfort of the comforter and counsel from the counselor, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, please guide us, lead us, teach us, fill us, and empower us that we may become alert, sensitive, consistent, accountable, reliable, and trustworthy to earn your trust. In Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. amen. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory of God.